Yo, what is up, YouTube, man? In season three, they added one new signature size of escape in NBA 2K22, and that is the Chris Paul. Now, Chris Paul in real life, you know, he's a pretty decent dribbler. He's not really known for his flashiness, but he is known for his efficiency. He never really turns the ball over, and we all know how crazy of a mid-range specialist he is, and he can get that pull-up jumper at the free throw line. That is almost going in 100% of the time, but we're gonna be testing out this new size up escape, and as you can see in the animations, it's not looking too crazy. Now, signature size up escape packages, a lot of people use them in different ways. Some people use them just to do the, the backward step back animation that you'll see a lot of people do with the big hop back. The other thing you can do with them though, is they kind of got like a, a jump to the side as you saw my player do right there. Most of the time you're gonna see people use the exact same dribble moves because people like to play the same, people like to use what's the best. Today we are going to see if Chris Paul signature size of escape is one of the best of the game. If it's good, I'm on my six foot six shot creator, so it's a really good build to test things out because I can drive and I can shoot. I got the high ratings. My finishing isn't too crazy, but I can definitely beat my defender with my dribble moves and get to the paint. You see, we're going up against a playmaking shot creator. Now he's got a 63 win percent. He averages almost 11 points a game though. That is more than me. And he's hit level 40 twice. So this guy is definitely somebody that knows what he's doing. Whenever I make these videos to test it out, I don't go to the mic core. I just hop right in a game because yes, to be the best of the best, you do got to go to the mic court and test out dribble moves. But for me, whenever I am using animations, whenever I'm using spin jumpers, dribble moves, I can test them out and I can find out pretty early on if they're worth having on or if they're bad or maybe, you know, they're being slept on. You see right here, I start off with an easy dunk. This guy, you know, doing his normal stuff. He is a very tall play shot. You know, you might be thinking of current gen where play shots are usually pretty tiny. On next gen, sometimes people do make their builds pretty tall. I'm six foot six, and he looks like he's a bit taller than me. So he can be six seven, six eight. This play right here, so check this out. This is the size of escape right there with the double hot back thing. The little side to side behind the back right there. That is also in the signature size of escape package. This whole play, I was really just trying to see all the different ways my dude would move with this escape on. So it did look like he was boxing me. I will not lie, but in the end, I did get a dunk off. So at the same time, you know, maybe I was cooking him. Maybe I wasn't so much getting boxed. You know, he's got to be nervous now. A quick 4-0. All that defense just for me to score. He's got the big hop back on his animations. When it comes to escape packages, that is one of the toughest moves to defend because you got to play the shot. And if you do play high, they can drive by. Now the Chris Paul one, this step back right here, I'm not the world's biggest fan of it. I don't think it's that good for shooting off of it. Now you're going to see in this gameplay, I do shoot off of it a couple times and it does work, but it's a bit slow because it's kind of got that double hot bag, you know, James Harden travel looking animation in it. It's better for somebody that likes to do a dribble move out of that. As you'll see again, I do a lot right here. He does the big step back. I can test it. I do get an 8%, but he hits it. That's what I'm talking about. If you're not right up there, it is tough. Hit him with the spin back behind the back. That behind the back is another move in the signature size up escape and right there, you know, like I said, it's not the best for stopping off a dot on, but I do get him right there. And the side animation I did, it was pretty big. It would be really good for if you're a guard that's about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, that runs screens, you know, the ones you guys have seen. He gets a ball stripper animation right there. As it's 9-4, to four, you know, hit him right here. Try to do the behind the back. Get over there. He blocks me. I have made a decision on the Chris Paul signature size up escape. It is decent, but it is not my favorite. I don't think it's that great. I think it would be more effective for screens than it would ISO. Honestly, when I'm ISOing, I like to have the big hop back. I like to shoot off of it. I like to see what the defender does, especially early game. If he does the same thing every single time, I can get a lot of free buckets. If he's just going to let me drive, of course, I'm going to drive all game. You see, he can't get me on it. I'm playing it very well. You can't be predictable with it. The best way to use it is to do a dribble move and then go right there. Again, he hit me with three times. He gets the dunk, though. It is very tough to defend dunking in this game when everybody's got a three-pointer. Not because paint defense is horrible, but it's just because you don't want to give up a three in a mode like this. If you give up too many threes, even if you're hitting twos every play, you're going to be down. And while you're doing that, when you're playing high, you pretty much got to go for a chase down. Everybody's got that quick drops off one dunk package that is not really blockable. You know, back in previous 2Ks, people have like windmills, crazy dunks on. Now everybody is playing it safe right here. I try to get behind the line, try to go up. My stamina is down. Thank goodness for the foul. If somebody's shot clock is running low, never foul them 
All you got to do at that point is play the drive because they don't want to shoot with low stamina. Again, using that behind the back dribble move into the fade. He's kind of giving it to me. You see the way the guy's playing? He's playing low, but he's also playing to the point where if I do hit him with a step back, he's just going to pull up really quick. Now, if I just go to the side, he's got no answer for that. He goes in again with the dunk. You see what I'm talking about? There's just no way I'm getting a chase down on any of these dunks. And yes, I could give him a little bit less space, but I don't want to give up any threes. I'm confident that I can score every single play, whether it's a two, whether it's a three, whether it's a fey, whether it's a green. And you can see I am up. I do have the lead. So I'm not worried in the slightest if he keeps taking twos. The only way he is catching up is if he gets any threes. Again, the midi free throw line fade. It is what he's given me. It's easy to read the defense. If you struggle to score against people, especially on playing the 1v1 market court, just look at how they're playing you and you can figure out what you want to do on offense really easily especially if you have a build that can score in a multitude of ways i know a lot of people do make one dimensional players like the five foot ten five foot nine players sometimes they'll make a really tall player that like only has shooting doesn't have dunking if you do stuff like that you're just making the game harder for yourself i get it back watch this again he's playing high he's guarding everything i'm doing step backs he's not giving me the shot so of course i'll just hit him with the drive He's got shot creating takeover now. I definitely do want to make sure that he doesn't get a fade off. A lot of people, you know, this is their Hail Mary. They'll get down, they'll start fading threes. It'll catch them up in the game. I'm playing very good defense, and you are going to see he drives. There is nothing I can do. It doesn't matter how great a defender you are. You are not blocking the dunks that this dude has on his player. Now, I also got my shot creating takeover. You see, little step back behind the back. Twig drops off one to the paint. Of course, I got him on this build. Now, I will say... On my other slashing builds, like my new 6'9 Demigod build, I got a lot of crazy dunks on that build. I don't care about having the safe dunks. I want to be flashy when I play. It is worth it to me. 18 to 19, I mistakenly give up a three. Big stop coming up. Big shot right here. Let's see what we can do. Combo. Step it back. Green, baby. Get him out of here. Let me know if you guys enjoyed the video. Let me go. Let me know if you guys use this dribble move. You know, maybe I'm underrating it a little bit. I did not love it, but it was pretty good. And that's a lot of the dribble moves in this game. They're just decent. They're not amazing. And uh, yeah, man, you can definitely make it work. You know, if you want to be different, try it on. This is Tonic. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.